everyone to see. And then um, I'll check the chat regularly during my lecture and I will answer and clarify any points that seem confusing for you guys because this might be a hard concept for um, younger students in the Zoom call. Okay, so first, a history lesson. So we have industrial revolutions where steam powered machines and mass production was invented. And this was an literal industrial revolution because it made physical work easier to do. Um, but then people these days talk about the fourth industrial revolution. We have a new industrial revolution coming up. And what, and so what is that? Because we made physical work easier to do now through like uh, mass production, uh, it's time to make mental work easier to do. And mostly that's by using AIs. So, well, you've heard, you probably heard of the fact that AIs are pretty important. And for those of you who have more interest in this field might have um, heard about AIs, machine learning, and like some programs called TensorFlow and Torch and et cetera. But the general population, um, from my understanding, doesn't really know how exactly an AI works. So in this lecture, I will um, teach you how simple AI works um, with, the, with an example of chess. Okay, so here's an overview of what I'll be talking about. I'll be talking about general concepts for a simple AI, trees, heuristics, mini math algorithm, and then ways to make our AI smarter, which, is, which uses depth and pruning. And if we have time, I will go a little bit into machine learning to make our AI even smarter. Okay, uh, so trees. So we have a nice tree here and we can kind of represent it in a computer science way. And that is by these circles. These circles represent leaves and we have, if we have three leaves, um, we have three leaves, yeah. Um, and then we can branch from one leaf to different leaves, just like this tree. And then we can continue this and make more trees and more branches. So how about we get rid of the tree background image and we just have the tree that we drew here. And I'm just gonna simplify this tree a little bit and you know, make it more spread out so that it's not as hard to see. So here, here's our tree, but I just extended the branches in the way I wanted because it looks nicer. Um, and these trees will be our data structure for the AI. And, but most of you guys might be wondering, okay, what do you mean by data structure? So here's an example with chess. Let's imagine it this way. If white goes first, um, let's say for example, this pawn uh, is gonna move. Um, as a, the white player decided that uh, he or she wanted to move this pawn. The pawn can move here or it can move here also, right? Because it can take one step or it can take two steps. We're gonna label these possible moves um, later. And um, the second pawn can also move one or two. And then that can be said for all eight pawns here. It can move one or two spaces. And then we're gonna label them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, et cetera, and then 15 and 16. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, okay, okay. Because I was just checking the chat and there were no questions so far. I was just trying to check. Okay, um, so we can, um, draw the possibility of white starting moves by from S, which is just base case um, start, like the chessboard, um, the possible moves that the white player can do. Uh, the white player can move the pawn to one or two, this pawn to three or four, this pawn to five or six, and et cetera. Um, you also can move the knight to either this position or this position and this knight to this position or this position. 
but for sim for simplicity, I just used pawns, only pawns here. Um, yeah, and when it becomes Black's turn, the Black pawns can do the same thing, can move one or two spaces. This pawn can also move one or two spaces. All the pawns here can move to one or two spaces. So, um, so each, so if we draw an entire tree for the two possible moves, two possible starting moves of white and black players, um, we can go from start and then the white pawn can move to space one and then the black pawn can move to uh, whatever space here. And then the same thing can be said here. So there's 16 squared possible combinations in the first um, two moves. Uh, and for simplicity, I colored white players moves um, as white and black player moves as black. Okay, so, and we can continue this, right? Because chess is not just two turns. We can continue this and, you know, these, you know, leads can branch out to another set of like possible moves and uh, leaves. And this move can also um, branch out into an another set of move, uh, branch, uh, leaves, I'm sorry. And another move here can, you know, branch out into leaves also. So this tree, what I drew here, if it continues um, infinitely, but not kind of infinity because chess will stop at a certain point. This tree will represent every possible combination of the chess game. Uh, everyone's okay so far, right? Let me check the chat real quick. Okay, no questions so far, nice. Um, and here's how we're gonna define these leaves and branches. So circles are gonna be board state and branches are gonna be each move. This might seem confusing, but let me show you an example. So, oops. so when the white pawn moves from here to here, then it's gonna, uh, the white state, it's gonna be label four because the pawn moved to position four. Uh, and then this branch is like the player actually moving the pawn here. And then if the black pawn moves to position nine here, um, you know, this little branch is the black player moving the pawn. And nine is where is the board state where um, the black pawn is stationed here. And this tree right now uh, shows that the white pawn moved to four, the black pawn moved to nine. And then if the white pawn moves again to eight, um, the eight, this four, nine, eight, this shows the current board state where the pawn moved here, black pawn moved here, and then this white pawn moved here. Okay, so let's represent this in terms of lists. So we have the starting point and there's gonna be a white table and there's gonna be a black table. The white table means that there's, it's the white players, you know, possible move and the black table will mean the black players possible moves. So if we draw this tree into like a list format, we can say that this starting from, from the start, we can, the white player can choose what, uh, one of 16 possible combinations to go to. Um, so this, this is basically this in terms of this. And if we um, go further in, into the next step, the black player can choose to go wherever in the possible combinations of one to 16 after the white player chose which number to go to. So for example, if the white player you know, chose two, black player can choose eight or something. And this tree is basically this list. And you know, it continues on and on this one can have possible combinations from one to n, even this. And then, yeah, it goes on and on. So if we create an AI just using what we have right now, oops, then um, 
the white player will first select a position that, or a move that they want to do. And for example, say that the white player chose number two, for example, example. Then the black player, um, oh yeah, um, sorry. Um, the white player is the human player and the black player will be the AI. So basically I'm playing against, so if I'm the white player, um, I'm playing against a black um, AI. The black player is the AI. So, so if I chose number two to go to, then the black player, the AI can choose a random number between one to 16. It's not really artificially intelligent, but for, you know, names, we'll just call it AI because we'll improve it later. Um, yeah, so if, for example, say the black AI chooses to go to 14, then, you know, I can choose N. Maybe N is like 130. I chose 130 because it seems like the best option. Then the AI will choose a random number between one and N. Maybe they chose uh, number five, for example, you know? So basically what, it, what the AI right now is doing is that when I do, when I make a move, it just analyzes the number of possible uh, combinations or possible moves that can be done. And it just chooses a random move to be done. But you know, randomness isn't really too intelligent. So we need to create a logic for the AI to follow. It just can't be random. So that's where heuristics and minimax algorithms come in. So before we get into like the details of heuristics and minimax algorithms, we need to learn that, well, you probably learned from the previous lecture, but computers probably uh, usually follow a true and false logic. So for example, two is larger than one, it's true. 100 is less than 103, that's also true. Minus one equals one, no, that's pretty false, that's false. But um, in the right side example, if carrots are larger than mushrooms, but I don't know, this larger sign might not be just size, it might be like cost, it might be tastiness, it might be I don't know, color on the RGB scale. So the computer doesn't know if this is true and false. Uh, same thing goes for rabbits equals hamsters. Uh, it might be true, it might be false, I don't know. Uh, and the same way smile face is better than the angry face. Well, we kind of know that smile faces are better than angry faces, but the computer doesn't know. Nice. So, okay, let me check if I have any questions. Okay, no questions, nice. Um, so in order for computers to follow a uh, true and false logic, we need to assign numbers for the computer to uh, compare. So this is where heuristics comes in. So I'll use the smiley face is larger or better than angry face example. And I'll assign my own ratings, which are heuristics. So say for example, a smile face equals 100 happiness and an angry face equals negative 100 happiness. Then smile face is 100 happiness, angry face is negative 100 happiness. So it's true, right? 100 is larger than negative 100. The units are in happiness. You know, it might be different from the uh, units you use, such as like um, meters or liters. Um, but, you know, it's a unit that I created, so it can cancel out and the computer can evaluate that it's true. So this is the definition of heuristics. Heuristics is basically assigning numbers to unquantifiable objects using our own logic. Just like this happiness example here. Okay, so heuristics in chess. So we can see that this is a checkmate position, um, the pawn, and then the king. The king can either move here, here, or here, but then if anywhere the black king moves, it's gonna be eliminated by the pawn or either the king. So your checkmate is pretty awesome. So we're gonna give a heuristic value of positive infinity because you basically won the game. There can't be anything better than winning the game, right? There shouldn't be, yeah. <laughs> and if the opponent 
checkmated you. That's pretty awful. And you lost the game. So that, so the heuristic value for this would be negative infinity because the worst case is losing the game. And if we go into like uh, different examples, if you are about to eliminate the opponent's queen, that's pretty great. But it's not as good as like eliminating the queen, uh, the king, sorry. Uh, so we're going to assign a number smaller than positive infinity, which would be, I don't know, I just set it to around 1,000. And if the opponent is about to eliminate your queen, I'm just going to set it as negative 1,000. Uh, you can notice here that the numbers that I used are very subjective and um, it can differ, uh, differ between person to person. So I'll elaborate that later on, on how to like create better heuristics or, you know, assign better numbers to um, certain events. And, you know, following the same logic, we can have like you eliminate a pawn and equal like 100 points. A bishop can be worth uh, 350, a rook can be 500, and then the opposite would just be a negative because, you know, it's not good for you. And this is up to who creates the AI, basically. And um, for example, if I set the queen as like a thousand, right? Eliminating the queen as a thousand. But if you think the queen isn't so important, you can just reduce the number to a hundred. But, you know, you know, chess logic has it that queen is the strongest uh, piece in the game. So that's why I assigned it a thousand. But, you know, if you like to play without queens, you can just assign it a hundred because uh, you don't really quite care. Yeah, but this isn't the end. We have, uh, I just showed you a heuristics estimate of, you know, capturing the other opponent's piece, but there are also like futuristic heuristics, which rhymes. Um, so if your pawn is like two moves from killing the queen, you can assign it 300, you can assign a number of 300 points here. If your pawn is three moves from killing the queen, you can assign a number of 50, you know, and then, you know, the further your pawn is from killing the queen, the number will decrease. Uh, and there are also locational heuristics as well. You know, for example, if your pawn blocks the way for the opponent's pawn, you can give it 40 points for, you know, you're kind of messing up their strategy, right? So that's positive points for you. And, you know, uh, these white circles are pawns. And if your pawns are distributed in this way for some reason, then your knight can only move to two different spots, right? So that's not good because that is limiting the possibilities of your knight. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Uh, your knight's moves. So that would be like negative 60. It's a value to, that I just arbitrarily set. And if your pawn opens up a road for the rook to travel, you know how the rook is usually um, trapped here? And if the pawn, and the rook is pretty strong. So, um, if a pawn opens up a road for the rook to travel, I might just give it 200 points. These numbers are completely set by me. They're not true at all, but here's an example. And there's probably more that I couldn't think of, but yeah. Okay, so basically how smart the AI comes from how well you design your heuristics. And a lot of people write research papers on this topic. So just know that if you create a super intelligent, perfect heuristic, then you can beat any player in the game, or at least draw with the best player in the game, because you're basically um, choosing optimal moves. Yeah, OK, so we're going to go back to our tree. And we're going to insert heuristics into it. So you know how this pawn could have moved to um, position one or position two? If the pawn, if the white player moves um, the pawn to, you know, position one, then position one, you know, this blocks the knight's path. It blocks the knight's possibilities. So we gave it 
a number of around negative 10. But if we move the pawn to two, it opens the way for the rook to move, right? The rook can finally be set free by going this way and then, you know, somehow going this way. So that's plus 40. And uh, thanks to our heuristics, we know, oops, that's a typo, that should be 40. Um, thanks to our heuristics, we know that um, 40 is larger than negative 10. So the computer will select, hey, number the option number two is better. So it'll go with option number two. And then uh, because the white player selected option number two, the black player can either choose, for example, one or two. Um, we have to examine all 16 different possible cases here, but for simplicity, I just use, you know, two random points. So this pawn can move here or either here. So if the pawn moves here, it blocks the knight's way and it exposes the king, right? Because if it moves here, the, uh, the king is vulnerable to this distance and the knight is also blocked from going this way. So we gave it a number of negative 80. But if the pawn moves two spaces forward, um, yeah, this should be negative 60. Um, if the pawn moves two spaces here, it only exposes the king, but the knight is still free. So we'll give it a, num uh, a number of negative 60. Here, both cases are pretty bad, right? You don't want to start from one or two. But in the case where this is your only starting move, uh, negative 60 is less worse than negative 80. So the computer will choose this option according to our heuristics and logic. So we can continue this and the computer will continuously find um, the best option for them according to our heuristics. The heuristics uh, to reiterate is basically our logic in the game. Okay, so we go, that brings us to the mini max algorithm. So I um, marked white players moves as a upward white triangle, and then the black players moves as the downward facing um, triangle. And the numbers inside each triangle are heuristics, like for example, if you make this move, the black player earns 80 points, but the 80 points is, you know, defined by me or you or someone who creates the AI. So in this case, um, the white player, you know, starts from here. Um, and then the black player will choose between plus 80, minus 20, and plus 10 the black player will choose plus 80 because they want to choose the best option for them. So this is where the name Minimax algorithm comes in. So from the white player's perspective, just from my perspective, if I'm the white player, I will choose the max, the opponent player will choose the minimum, and then, the, then I'll choose the maximum again. Yeah, so according to um, this table, this is the path we want to go through, go through, right? Okay, let me check if I if there's any questions so far. Uh, scale only both sides are zero zero. I think we have one question on the yeah. chat box about stalemates. Oh, stalemates. Okay, um, stalemates. Um, basically stalemates. Okay. Let me check. Stalemates are when like both players can't do a checkmate, right? Yes. Just to clarify. Yes. Okay. Okay. So in a stalemate, uh, situation, um, let me draw. So in a stalemate situation, uh, you know, we would have trees that continuously uh, led to a stalemate situation, right? Um, then there's I, then there's either going to be um, two situations. This is where you kind of where your king dies, so you want to like live, right? 
And then, so you're basically going to choose the live option. And then there's going to be die, there's going to be live. And then this will uh, just continuously uh, iterate over and over again. That's, that's the idea of stalemates. Uh, was that um, clear enough? Oh, does assigning human heuristics hinder AI potential? Uh, okay, I'm sorry, but I'm not sure if, oh, okay, okay, I understand. Um, yeah, so the better the heuristics, the, the smarter your AI will be. So basically, you know, you know how I, you know how I set like the queen, oops, the queen as like a thousand and a rook as a 500. But this is just like random numbers that I set because I thought the queen is worth more than the rook and the rook is worth more than the bishop and the bishop is worth more than a pawn. But um, maybe only God knows the true heuristics. Um, and what I mean by God, I mean like an omniscient figure, omniscient figure. Yeah, but okay, so maybe God was like, Hi. Actually, in chess, bishops are worth more than rooks. So maybe these two might have to be swapped together. So, yeah. And, well, how do you know that? Uh, you got to experiment a lot, and then you got to compare. I'm going to talk about that in machine learning later. Um, but the better you set your heuristics, the better your AI will be. Because if your heuristics are bad, um, your computer might think it's the optimal option, but it might not really be the most optimal option. Like, so if, for example, here, a rook is larger than a bishop, but in reality, a bishop is worth more than a rook. But my computer thought a rook is worth more than a bishop, so it just traded a rook for a bishop because that's plus 150 for us. But in reality, that was actually minus 150 because the bishop was worth more than a rook. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, so it really depends on, so your AI potential really um, depends on how you set your heuristics. Okay, so I'm gonna clear my drawings and then go back to the slide. That was... Okay, uh, I'll continue from here. Oops. Okay, so this is the path we took, right? Because we went from maximum and then the black player chose their maximum, which in my um, my point of view was a minimum. And you know I chose the best option again, which was a thousand out of two hundred and one thousand. But here's the problem: if you just keep selecting like um, the best number for you, like at that moment, you kind of like arrive at this situation where you know. This isn't bad. So you chose hundred. Each oh, you chose a thousand, but the next possible move for the black might be infinity. Uh, the heuristic might be positive infinity, which means that you eliminated the opponent's queen, but you got checkmated. So this isn't good, right? So you have to see the bigger picture. You can't just like, you know, when you're running, you can't just look at the ground. You gotta, you know, see further. Yeah. So. This is where depth, depth sensing, sensing comes in. So for example, if we use um, a depth of four, then the white player will analyze every possible combinations within four depth. So by depth, I mean like four levels, which is level one, level two, level three, and level four. Let me draw that for people who might not have understood it. One two, three, and four. So this is what I mean by four depth. Okay, so um, the white player goes through all four depth, and then it calculates a total for each path, each possible path. So for this path, it would be plus 50, but the black player earned plus, plus 80, so that would be negative 80 for us. But I earned 200 points again, so that would be plus 200. But then the black player earned 20 points again, so that would be negative 
120. So our total will be 150. And, this, and the same thing can be done here. But you know, this doesn't matter because you got checkmate it. Total with negative infinity. You never want to go this route. So say no. Um, same thing. You go this route, plus 50. This is a negative 20 for the black player. So we add 20 to us. So plus 50, plus 20, negative 30, uh, and negative 30. So that brings us to, that's not larger than 150. So we say no. Um, Okay, yeah, so total is 10, um, total is 40, total is negative 40, and total is 10 for all these possible paths here. Okay, everyone is clear with that. Let me check the chat real quick. Uh, I'll, I'll answer some of these questions later because um, these might take some time. Okay, so this was death sensing. Uh, death sensing. So the player looks at four, uh, all the possible combinations of paths it can go to inside four levels, and then it calculates the total. And from our totals, it seems that 150 is the best option for the white player to go to. So they will choose this path to go to. So the deeper the depth, the smarter the AI will be. For example, if our depth was not four, we wouldn't have known that plus 1,000 here was in fact a very bad move. So, so, the, so deeper your depth means that you can scan through all the possible combinations um, there are in the amount of depth there are. So it's basically like you're forecasting like five moves ahead of you or you know, four moves ahead of you right now. So it's gonna be smarter, right? And so the optimal case here would be, would be having infinite depth. But is this possible? Uh, no. And we're gonna look into why infinite depth is not possible. So for example, if these three pawns are gone, there's a lot of like different uh, moves that can be done, right? Yeah. These are all like possible moves that the any piece that is not pawns can move to. And there's a lot. And our tree will get pretty large. And a lower end estimation of possible moves will be 25 possible moves per turn around. And a game of chess typically lasts 40 turns. So the number of possibilities that you will have to calculate uh, in order for like infinite depth would be 25 to the power of 40, which is basically eight to the power, eight times 10 to the power of 55. And that's a lot. And our computers cannot handle this much. Um, assume like calculating heuristics, you know how we like set rules and logics for each possible like move and like what it does. Um, so I'm just gonna assume that it's like 80 bytes. Um, when I created an AI myself, it was around 80 bytes to like, one kilobyte. So I'll just use the lower estimation of 80 bytes um, and multiply that by 25 to the power of 40. That's like 10 to the 45, 10 to the power of 45 um, gigabytes, which is a lot because considering our computer's RAM is around 16 to 32 megabytes, uh, no, 13, 16 to 32 gigabytes. This is like a lot higher than what our computer can do. So unfortunately, we have to limit our depth to around six or seven for a normal computer. Um, I use a pretty fast computer myself. And if I go to depth six, it takes around like 40 seconds for uh, the computer to like calculate the next best move. And when I use depth number seven, I think it took like 10 minutes or something. Yeah, and then if you go to depth eight, it would take like, 10 times 25 minutes. And that's not really applicable. So we have to limit our depth to six or seven for a normal computer. Okay, so 
I'm just going to do a quick summary here and then I'll answer some of your questions. And then if we have time, we can move on to the machine learning part to create better heuristics. So we learned about trees and so trees are basically a data structure and we can use these trees to represent the game of chess. And we develop heuristics so that, so we assign numbers to like certain moves, right? And then we, after we assign numbers to certain moves, we use these heuristics. We inserted them into each, our tree um, for each possible, you know, move and board state. And then we just compare these numbers to find, you know, the optimal path, the better path. And we learned about Minimax algorithm where the, where I, where I will always choose the maximum, the best option for me. And the AI will choose the worst option for me or the best option for them. So that's like max, min, mini max algorithm. And then we used optimal, uh, finding optimal path using death. Um, so we sensed four different cases and we found that this route is the best. Even though there's a plus thousand here, we forecasted the future by death sensing, death sensing, and um, we realized that this um, option isn't really the best option. And this and these other options were less than 150, so we're not going to go there. And methods to make the AI smarter is to basically create better heuristics and increase the search depth. Okay, so I'll be answering some of your questions 